under here. It's how it is. Okay, so I'm trying to go down to where we are. Yeah, you're not sharing your screen yet. Well, because I'm not, I don't want to drag everybody through my thought process. <laughs> you don't want to <laughs> reveal the dirty laundry, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, but I have to bring, I have to think of how I'm going to bring everybody up to speed. I sat down at, uh, at 1030 this morning, right? I got my coffee ready. I sat down, I got ready to do this. And then that triangle pro stuck in my head. And then I, all of a sudden it was 11 o'clock. So I didn't get to get this as organized as I wanted to be this morning. Okay. Um, all right. So what it is, is um, I don't think I have to go back too far. I can just sort of narrate. Well, let's start from here. Okay. You ready, boss? Yes, sir. Share screen. See, it doesn't tell us. Yep, you're the host. There you go. What does that say right there? What makes legitimate Make the law legitimate and its content and construction. In its content and construction. I can't read very well this morning, apparently. It's a weak coffee, perhaps. It's all those scotch and hookers from last night. You go ahead and confess the rest of us. You know, I talk that smack all the time. It never happens. All right. Um, so I just want to reiterate what we're doing. We're working our way from ethics. In other words, there's a whole lot of subject to cover. We, we said, we're, gonna, we're not going to work our way from physics up to ethics. That'll like take us like three months. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll start with what people care about, which is ethics, which is cooperation. And I'll work up into law and we'll go through the law because that's the part that is uh, uh, most applicable to uh, ordinary people. And so we're cover we, you and I have covered an awful lot of this. So uh, I thought I would we could I, we could go back to moral legitimacy to legality versus legitimacy. Um, we could go back to the evolution of the ambiguity of the term law. What is law? Um, we go back to the problem of neural economy uh, and all the con all the functions of what goes on inside of polity. How we have to preserve. Uh, cooperation what are the definitions of rights you know i mean we right. go back through all this stuff right? we've covered all this stuff in previous uh previous uh, um, con conversations um what i haven't done in those con from those conversations has gone through and uh edited this so that it's a little more orderly right. and i haven't gone in and figure filled in the things that i didn't think were necessary at the time um what we did in our last session was talk about um, how a law needed to be constructed as a narrative in order to fulfill all the obligations of a legitimate law. In other words, a legitimate and moral law. And so we covered those. Um, we covered that this is very much like a uh, set of class diagrams that we use in software, which is the reason I do it is because software has uh, a, a thing called compilability, which means it's internally consistent. And so the reason we use the law in this format is to make the equivalent of compilability, which is that it's internally consistent and unambiguous and therefore decidable. <clears throat> The uh, next, so that, that's the construction, other that's the outline. And so we're drilling down from what is law to what is a le legitimate law, et cetera, to what is this, what do laws actually have to look like? What do they have to include? And, this, and specifically, we talked about, you know, what's in the classes, what um, there was a class called regulation, one operation, cessation, class enforcement. But we have all these classes that go on. So. These are basically requirements for the law that we list here, right? We listed these requirements, right? But these are the this is how we institution we uh, we form a class or template of it, and the goal of which is to, it should be possible for us to write a compiler for the law, right? What that means is a test of internal consistency. 
Okay. It doesn't mean that it's always going to yield the right outcome. <laughs> Just like no theory will it be infinitely expansive, expansive, right? right? It only means that it's 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 not it, as far as we know. If you satisfy all these criteria, it's not, it it still qualifies as a law. In other words, it's not false. So the next subject is okay. Now, now that we talked about the structure and all the properties, what what is it? What does that got to include? I mean, what do we, what do we, what is, what is the, what is the, um, uh, in other words, these things have to surround the law, right? right. But what about the law itself? And, um, and this requires me to repeat a few, few things and I might get this a little fuzzy the first time. I know words. Okay. I didn't warm up on, I mean, I know this cold, but uh, I don't have the narrative prepared in my head to talk about it. So we'll right. sort of see how I do with it. So we have the, uh, what is the content of a law within this structure of law? So in other words, whereas we have observed, therefore we propose, um, and these are the propositions that include this section, rights, obligation, and alienations. So what we're concerned about here is um, the law is the reciprocal insurance of one another's self-determination by self-determined means. The people are insurers of one another, so one can be insured or uninsured. Does that make sense? Right. right? The state is an insurer, and right. the court is an enforcer. Right. Right. Meaning that if you are insured, you are under the protection of others or outside the protection of others. You're either insured by or uninsured by. So it's like a, it's like a, uh, the court is a uh, executive insuring agent deciding who's insured and who's not insured. Uh, well, well, yeah, the law is, this, the law as, assumes that if you're together, you're insured, All right? If you're, in other words, if you're both coming before the court, you're both accepting that you're insured and that you're reciprocally insuring one another, right? And that, right? So the, the well, point- there's a conflict though, right? Or there's a conflict, that's okay. You're still saying we're both insured, but I want you to decide in my favor because I think I'm right. And you want to decide in your favor because you think you're right. Okay. Right? And so you're going for a dispute resolution. However, this means that the law is not universal. It's an agreement between the insurance reciprocal insurers. This is the same thing as the law of cooperation. We can't co we can only cooperate if we can cooperate. Right. Right. We, in other words, morality is limited to those who we choose to cooperate with. We can, if we're breaking morality, then we're saying we're not, we don't want to commute, cooperate with you. Right. Um, the same thing is for um, the law, is if we're, br we're breaking the law, we've either made a mistake, we're trying to get away with something, <laughs> right? <laughs> but um, we still are claimed to be insured under the law. Most of the time, somebody's, the, the, the answer is, it go, both parties are at fault, <laughs> almost always. <laughs> Okay. So it's um, uh, so the question is so, but the point here I'm trying to make is that there are people who are under defense of the law, right? And there are people who are outside of the law. So if you choose to be an outlaw, in other words, you reject reciprocal insurance. Right. Okay. You are no longer under defense of the law, which means it's open season on you. Right. So communities used to use ostracization from poverty. No, they're impoverished. So, if, because in much of history, ostracization from your group was equivalent to certain death. Right. In a federated people, that isn't necessarily true, right? You might have another, in other words, there's lots of small places you can go to, 
because they're all near kin and you might be useful or whatever. The, my favorite example of this is Leif Erikson, who was a, or was uh -huh. Eric the Red. Eric the Red, right? Which one, which one was the bad one? That would be Eric. Eric the Red, right? That bastard got kicked out of every society he was put into, right? <clears throat> and he still needed to end up being in charge of everyone that was around. He was a superior badass, right? I mean, he was just an amazing badass. Um, so, uh, but, you know, he'd cut your head off for, you know, and he did. <laughs> Kill you for wow. So, um, so uh, he would be ostracized, but that didn't mean it made anything. He just went to another colony and started up where being an asshole was less damaging to the local group. And he took people with him. And it turns out that when you're forging new territories, having an asshole in charge turns out to be a pretty effective means of getting shit done. So, um, but for so it being an outlaw um uh is is being uh, is in the and i'm going to use the english common law because it's the one that's most right. preserves the german ancestral germanic and european law is that if you're an outlaw that means that you're not insured anymore right that means you and your shit are free for the taking so that's where the word outlaw comes out is outside of the law now, and the most important part about this is that it's a non-universalist understanding of the law, which is what I would like to get across to our Christian brothers. <laughs> is Christianity is a not, needs to be a non-universalist religion. <clears throat> it only applies to your those people you want to cooperate with and who are willing to cooperate with you. So once you've determined whether that it's not outside the law, right? And that it's outside, then we have to say, okay, it, this is who it applies to. Right. In other words, people outside of the United States are not protected by our laws because they don't reciprocally insure us. It means that people who involuntarily immigrate are outside the laws because they haven't, they haven't adopted our full set of insurances. And that's what defines the West, is oh. this. Reciprocal insurance of their self-determination by self-determined means. If you aren't fully integrating, then you aren't engaging in reciprocal insurance of one another's self-determination by self-determined means. Therefore, you're a criminal. You're outside the law. So what they've attempted to do is create a human, hu a secular humanism, which is a universalist application of our law. Right. And this is, of course, just a means of avoiding the cost of forcing people to pay the cost of one another's self-determination by self-determined means. And instead, by depriving them of that self-determination by self-determined means and depriving re us of reciprocal responsibility for insurance of one another's self-determination by self-determined means, <clears throat> that the state is generating demand for authority themselves, rent-seeking right, um, uh, and, and corruption by immigrating people who generate conflict by not uh, engaging in the full set of a reciprocal insurance of one another's self-determination by self-determined means. So when these people come here, if they are not reducing all frictions by doing that, they're imposing costs. We see these costs largely in the destruction of our institutions of cultural production, which is what the secular humanists, which is the good women are doing, and the, uh, which was that they're what the Christians are doing, the, the good women secular humanists are doing, and what the bad leftists are doing is they're generating demand for authority by, um, by absolving people of responsibility for full integration into the foundations of Western civilization, which is the reciprocal insurance of one another's self-determination by self-determined means, by, the by, by means of sovereignty and demonstrated interest and reciprocity in display word and deed. So, <clears throat> How would we? Does that make sense so far? I mean, yes. I'm trying. I'm trying to hit this this thing with a hammer so many times. Yes, you're doing a good job ringing the that, bell. That every every, every it pierces every skull. <laughs> but, 
Um, uh, so we have a, the law is particular. In other words, it's non-universal, it's particular. Right. All right, and uh, particular. Right. So, in how do we create the terms by which we reciprocally ensure self-determination by self-determined means? We need three properties of every claim. The obligations, the rights, and the inalienabilities. And unfortunately, this has been the problem. <laughs> right? Because the inalienability, right? And the obligation are the way that the left, the secular humanist females and the, I gotta say, the and the Christians of femi feminist universalism are all attempting to avoid the payment of obligations and the inalienability of those obligations um, from ensuring reciprocal insurance. Now, this is partly necessary since women can't fight. And you bring, and as we've seen, trying to bring women into military institutions just or any organization um, reduces the competitive value of capacity of that institution. What did I get that reaction out of? Just See, a, I didn't. Just, I was looking. I was looking at the text when I was saying I, that, and no, out of the I, corner of my eye, I saw that face. Now, what does that face mean? I was, I was reflecting on um, my father's experience as an Air Force pilot and wondering what he would think about the fact that the Defense Department is making flight suits for pregnant women. Yeah. Just. We've just ended the period where the military can be used as a so as a jobs program for right we've just ended that that's gone so it's like a social welfare it's exactly what it is like, it's a welfare system oh my what it used to be is a uh it used to be a very expensive system for the white uh, uh lower middle and working classes right um, and what it's become is a means of social, of de, of, and, and the thing is that the tradition that we have in our civilization is actually embodied in the Marines. <laughs> it's, it's no longer embodying in the constitution or in the institutions. Or, so we have to, the problem is we have to get the Marine ethic back out to everybody, which is really simple. This is my rifle, right? Which means this is this thing right here. This is all we got. I got to do it with this. And that's all I get, right? If I get a rifle, that's great. Uh, but in, and eventually I, I got to make do with what is, which means I'm responsible. Right. right. So uh, we have to restore that. So the, this military has been gutted. Of course, you know, that was Hillary, Hillary and Bill's intention. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we have, so the question, so then uh, I'm missing a piece here, which is that we have to have, um, uh, Okay. All right. So we have to right. Well, we're 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 working on what well, the law. We're we're. I gotta contextualize this so that I make sure that I'm grasping what's happening with this organization here. We talked about the form that the law is to take, and now we're talking about the contents to fill that form. Is yes. That correct. Okay. We started with this. It's, it's essentially we're working from the top down from what are we trying to do to what do we mean by this thing to law, which what constitutes some legitimate law to how is a legitimate law constructed right. to what is the content of the law? Right. In other words, okay. what, what, what are, what's the rat? We're just moving down the down the funnel. Thank right. you for right. um, bringing that up. And so I'm just trying to bring in that the first principle of the law is this because it's too it's sort of lost out there. Right, right. <laughs> it's this, this is particular, right? The natural law is universal, ah. right? But the law itself 
but laws that's that's an interesting paradox are particular all right so um in other words right right so um we can say, I can say, well, these are universal components of uh, natural law, but it, it, what determines that this is applied is, is that who's insuring whom? Right? Right? You, right. You it's like, it doesn't matter that that's how it works, if, um, but specifically, what are you referring to? Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, and who's insuring whom? <laughs> very important to know these things. So it's this is the law of the insurers. That's interesting. Which would be those people who are in cooperative union with one another. So this is why you end up with this hierarchy, which is self-determination. You end up with self-determination. P I O N. Why am I? What's you've ever you know what what's that disease called where you lose control of your fingers? Where people have uncontrolled fingers. Apraxia. Movement? I can't remember. Okay. But anyway, uh, I, that's my nightmare, because uh, is that uh, it happens? It happened to somebody I know too. Oh my. And so they they were they had to work really hard at restoring their ability to type. Oh because you can make your neural connections bleed, right? They can bleed. And if they bleed, you don't know what's going to happen. So self-determination, right? Then you go to individual son. Yeah. To group sovereignty. To um, national sovereignty. To... Um, uh, to federation. Um, so the, the problem is, is that national sovereignty requires federation. What, what happened? There we go. And uh, group sovereignty, uh, individual sovereignty requires um, natural law, um, which requires a, a Right. Right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Demonstrating interest. Group sovereignty requires um, uh, sovereignty reciprocity insured because this is self insurance. Right. This is group insured. And this is a federal uh, alliance concern. Right. So, you know, um, what is NATO? So NATO, what is Europe? What is, what is America? What is Europe? Yeah. What is NATO? These are all federations. Companies that, that ensure one another, thereby eliminating the need for authoritarianism. at the risk of defection. I'll see if you catch that. Okay. So you have the, the individual. Yeah. The, uh, so um, so what is a federation? Am I, so what is it? It's law, rule of law, law, democracy of the of the insurers. This is important of the insurers. Yes. 
uh, Federation. God damn it, I'm turning off the bulb. What's going on here? Oh, no, that's wrong F. This is the important point here, is this is responsibility. Yep. There's no faster way um, of, uh, of adapting in the way we do it. There's no way to possess knowledge any other way. So you could say, well, look what China did. They adapted faster. Well, of course they did, because they just imported everything. It doesn't right. mean they invented it. Stolen. <laughs> it's like saying Rome got rich because it made stuff. No, it just stole everything. Right. The, the Louvre has beautiful collection of art, of course, because Napoleon stole every piece of art in Europe that wasn't nailed down. He even stole thing. obelisks from Egypt. I mean, Jesus Christ, he stole like, everything that was nailed down. Going to, yeah, right. <laughs> That's important to recognize. So this is important because uh, once you realize that this is a consistent model. But the problem is this word here, this word okay. responsibility. Oh, this is the bad word. The problematic word. Oh, <laughs> word. right. No, uh, the, it's that response. It's the whole responsibility. Ah, so we go, that's pointing at the um, obligations and inalienabilities. So, who ensures the rights of children? <laughs> I like that you wrote that down. What well, part? Of children. It's the parents. Who's responsible for them, right? Hmm. Yeah. That's it. You know, so, so the problem is, is that we have extended, well, we have extended the franchise, the taxpayers to all from, from insurers to taxpayers to all. Yeah, irregardless of regardless. capacity.
PL. So th this is the problem is that we've extended the franchise from insurers to taxpayers to all, regardless of the, their capacity to act as an insurer. And this, is, this caused the failure of our social institutions, our failure of family as well. Um, the failure of democracy and is now causing the failure of the, of the fe of federations because only a minority are ever capable of willing and able, capable, willing and do, capable is able, right? Capable, willing, and do ensure one another's self-determination by self-determined means, by the preservation of sovereignty and demonstrated interests, reciprocity and display word and deed, ev the evolutionary velocity in all aspects of life that result and in the condition of prosperity that results from that evolutionary velocity in all aspects of life that we call innovation and cooperation in the markets. So um, the, the problem is, is how does the state just this really arose from how does does the state justify taxation of the uh, working laboring this uh -huh. is really where it comes from and as a consequent how can the non-productive, not the uninsured, not those who do not insure, suffer, how do not insure others, um, self-determination? Yeah. To rally, to organize politically, against those who, who do ensure self-determination, sovereignty, right. reciprocity. I really can't spell today. <laughs> I know. It's, it's all right. I, I'm sending the letters to my fingers and they're not all coming out. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> sovereignty, reciprocity. Spotty business. Markets, innovation. Adaptation and um, prosperity. Oh, my. Well, it's just the evolutionary. Yeah, of course. Muck. I mean, uh, this is what I say. Uh, uh, women are bad. Oh, my. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> it's fucking awful. Right? I, I wouldn't have believed this myself. I never would have. It, it completely goes against. I know it's a, this is a, everything. This is a key element of the um, liberal post-war settlement. 
that, that you are you are gyring against. There is just no way that this can be spun in any other way, that this is contrary to the post-war liberal settlement. And it is that which is bankrupt. And we are seeking to uh, account for the discrepancies now in our current age of crisis. I mean, it's and it's frustrating, right? Because um, uh, uh, what, of course, what everybody's going to think by stating the truth is that I want to remove women from politics at all, right? Which I'm like, well, you have protection of rule of law, all right? So there's no, there's, there's no, there's a difference between protection of rule of law when, if you, especially if you have right of appeal, right? To, in other words, you can't go as a poor person and say the state's failing me, right? Right. Right. right? That's not what's the, happening here. That's not that's, what's happening. And right. you, we're, we're in the pack. You could go to the manor, the Lord of the manor, okay. and you could do that. <laughs> this isn't working for me. Right? You could go to the church and say, this, this isn't work, this isn't working for me, right? And uh, you would have a right of a, a appeal to, your, to your, those with more agency than you right. across the hierarchy. But our people have no method. And they, they're told that democracy helps. No, it doesn't. It works the opposite. It's continuously making it worse. That's what the evidence is. The only reason things have gotten better is because of the leftover hangover advances we made in the 19th century up to the First World War. And, uh, and the uh, largesse of the uh, petroleum surplus that we've- Yes, that's it. Into. Yes. It's just, if you, if you want to reduce it to that, the reason you live better is the, long, the length of time it takes for the innovation of petroleum energy to work its way through the- work its, Way, work its way through all the available opportunities to make use of it. That's that's all there is. There's nothing else causing it. It's the increase in the availability of energy. So, I mean, it's not like democracy is a good thing. You might say the rule of law is a good thing. It is. Right. So it's a, the, that's interesting because it's like, now I will point to the leftists and they, they're, they keep on um, making uh, idealistic claims about democracy. And it is there. It's, well, see, you know, it's like, why did we talk? We started this morning's chat with why are these women, our women, do all this crazy shit, talk about nothing, get together, and then they tell us we got to come in order to have everybody there, despite the fact that they really don't want us there and they don't like anything we think, do, or say about what happens I, when I, we're there, you know, except that we approve of the food they put in front of us and tell them they're wonderful for doing that, right? But right. basically, they don't want us there, right? They right. want to get a bunch of women together. Right. The truth right. is, they, they know that if they get a bunch of women together, the women will get out of hand. So the reason they want <laughs> the men to be there is because men will prevent the women from getting out of hand i mean that's the real reason wait wait and help with the dishes <laughs> you know they wouldn't let us do the dishes the women all said you know, at least my mom's kitchen was really small because the way the house was designed right 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 artificially small um you know all these women pile into the freaking kitchen and do the do the blah, 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 blah. it was always fucking nonsense i mean i couldn't you know but they they loved it they loved the nonsense. Then, the, you know, our house was uh, kitchen here, dining room here, living room here, and family room back there, and this little walkway of the washroom over there. And it was like all open, right? It's because it's big archway, so it was all open. And they're like, little, 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 like, you know, of course, the men were trying to get into the family room. We call it family room, which is like the den or the back room, which is a wing off the back of the house. And like, we can like sit there, and they can the men can talk about man things and basically means get away from the women right and so uh, <laughs> for some sensible conversation <laughs> I, I was on this for a reason oh and so the problem is as you have a bunch of people the talking classes yes who find all this value in working together even yes. if they're not creating value yes this is the problem is that there's no regular is that so my question is, well, if I put the laws in place so you can't commit these crimes, won't women adapt just like men have adapted? Yes. Well, that's how I look at it, right? They'll, I mean- They'll adapt. Everybody will adapt. I don't-, I don't because, I, the Tools is, is the instruments of the state as instruments of oppression of bad behavior. And that's when those bad it. behaviors turns out to be fucking horrible when let loose. Because it's incredibly destructive, but it's 
it's subtle. It's like cracking your foundations everywhere, right? That's what they do. They, they, they think they're be helping people by facilitating irresponsibility. Right, right. And they think it. They think that's what there are, and they, they think they're caretaking. What they're not doing, and the reason they do that is because it's cheap, easy signals. Whereas actually doing something to care for people, working in a nursing home, working in a hospital, working in emergency services, providing uh, counseling, uh, assisting with the poor, those things are costly. Virtue signaling in politics is free. Right. I I, I support this candidate with democracy. It's fucking bullshit. It's like it's my it's my criticism of Christianity too. It's like I know what a real Christian looks like. You tell me that that Christian right there, that's a Christian. Why out doing shit, fucking arguing me about truth? That's not a Christian. That's fucking psychopath, right? I mean, you know, that just doesn't. That's the same thing I have with the fucking Nazis, dude. You can't write, make a religion of hating people, right? Uh, you, you know, if you make a religion of national socialism, one of course the word is tainted. But I mean, if you look about it in the French way, or it was just it was just democratic socialism, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, uh, which means that you know the, the difference for the uh, for the, the European uh, national socialists was that they were they don't didn't want that communism to spread there. And destroy their cultures. So I mean, you guys all, you know, everybody, everybody gets there's there's like some small segment of each little, you know, you know, the 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 people who still believe in the Republican Party. I mean, give me a what kind of idiot do you have to be? The people who are still neoconservatives, what kind of idiot do you have to be? I mean, I just look at these people is that they love to find other people who talk with them to help create the the illusion that they're achieving something. I think that there's a, a confluence of interests whereby the uh, they're being promoted by uh, in corporate agencies. You mean you're just saying that the way things are financed is or paid for is the way that that uh, people are or when you find the, the the noisy ones that make the right noises that promote my corporate interest those ones that keep the people in line. The, the talking heads that are successful are the ones that people pay attention to. So they're, they're selling the attention of the people to the corporations. Yeah, I, 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 I hear this corporation stuff and uh, I, I, I am deeply aware of how corporations think versus financial sector people think. Um, and so, you know, I've spent my life dealing with the Fortune 400 okay. class of people, right? They're just trying to keep a stream of income running so that they can keep all their people and all their customers, meaning their employees, their management, their top talent, their investors, their, you know, the public, their consumers, right. not right. mad at them. <laughs> right. 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 Uh, the problem is in the talking sector is in the means by which the least able people who end up in marketing, advertising, human relations, um, uh, and, um, ac and education, those are the least stable people, end up carrying the message through to these corporations and attempt to get attention from their peers. The, uh, the other part is the financial sector is organized to exploit the, work, the laboring working uh, lower middle yep. and middle classes. And so, um, uh, and then the, the state the state bureaucracies view their underclass and their peers and other governments as their customers, not the laboring, working, lower, middle, and middle classes as their customers. And so I, I don't know, when I look at this, I'm like, you know, I, I know Gates and Balmer and, and uh, uh, Satya Nadelli, and I know Della, and I know, um, you know, I knew, I know Larry Ellison, and I know, I, I didn't know, um, I didn't know jobs, um, you know, and I and I won't go. I mean, those are famous people that I have some experience with. But I mean, if you run around the 
I mean, you'd be a, a, a surprised at how moral a place like Frito-Lay, PepsiCo is on a general basis, right? Um, so, I mean, th there are plenty of, I don't know what corporation means. I know uh, that there is a caste in the business system that is woke and they are largely female or yep. female cognitive bias from the lower end of the graduating class feeling powerful because they have a weapon of which by which to promote their self-interest via the corporations that employ them. And the corporations are as much held hostage as you and I are. Okay. So the problem I see is the academy, the finance, the, I see it as the rent seeking population, the, the marketing, advertising, um, acad academy, public intellectual, uh, financial and bureaucratic system and po political systems. I see the talking classes as the enemy of the people because they found this wonderful weapon that they uh, and they've got they've now got mass communication, yep. thousands of channels of it, and social media by which to per, to uh, dis spread this religion of hate, um, which they consider the, a new morality, which is just race Marxism. So I mean. I view them. I don't. I don't get into the corporate thing. I mean, no. I understand what you're saying, and I'm, I, I agree. You're teasing it out better, which is more higher granularity or finer granularity of, of uh, analysis. I mean, if you go into the, you go into a business, a corporation. It's the HR. It's the chick class. The HR yeah, class. The marketing class. It's the HR right? the, man. I swear. The middle management. Feeling, female I class. Think, I deal exactly. with these HR people. It's like this. I get, I had a chat with a lady and she's like, she's on the telemedicine service and she wants to go back to work. And the, she tells me, she saw me here maybe two weeks ago or something like that. And she tells me, HR didn't like your note. And I'm like, really? How come they didn't tell me? And so I had to write her a new note because HR didn't like her old note. And I'm like, okay, what do we need to say to that nice HR people to make that work? Because well, I mean, it's like, it, go back it's to work. It, that, that's the communist. That's the communist model, right? Uh, the communist model is it must adhere to doctrine. Smile. I mean, they're just Bolsheviks. They're just Marxists. This is no different. I mean, then, thank, frankly, what's a Marxist and a communist is a woman. I mean, it's just so, we don't tell, so this goes to a. Um, German secret police um, lecture, okay? So German secret police is lecturing my friend, the Marine, and, and it's military intelligence kind of class. And it's like this, here's what happens. When you bust in on the revolutionaries, okay? They're in their room, plotting and planning with guns all around. And it's like the secret police is gonna bust in. It's like, shoot the women first. <laughs> <laughs> And he's not joking. He's not joking. He goes, here's because here's what's going to happen. You're going to bust in. And the men are going to think about how do we resolve this that I live. And the women are going to start shooting right now. Because <laughs> they already know how this ends. I'm like, wow. He says, shoot the women first. They're like, okay. Just a data point. There you have it. So anyway, can uh, I wanted to wrap this up because what we're talking about in the first topic here that I'm trying to get across is the law of the insurers of self-determination by self-determined means. That's this is the- Right. Or sorry. It's a precursor to what it follows. Necessary precursor. Correct. Well, <clears throat> there are, th this is a natural law. Right, because it's the optimum means of of Guaranteed evolutionary velocity, the cooperation producing evolutionary velocity. It's the optimum method. There's no better method than what we've done here. There, 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 it's just not possible to produce another one. And I think that's one of the things we we probably don't state often enough is that there are everything else is a question of variation from the optimum. So what people expect us to do is produce the, the optimum truth. Well, that's not what we're doing. We're producing the optimum and then we're saying, you pay the cost of variation from the optimum. Right. It doesn't mean nobody's gonna vary from the optimum. 
Right. Right. And some people may need to vary from the optimum for some period of time, but they can't promise that they won't pay the cost of variation from the optimum. They can only say at this period in time, we're going to vary from the optimum because the returns of doing so, uh, you know, at this point, let us get to the point where we can then adapt the optimum. Right. Right. Th th this is so it's a variation from the optimum. Um, so. Uh, it's the insurers. Now, the problem is, is that these people aren't insurers. They're insured. Ah. And, right? So, so some people are insured. So the, the, there is a difference between the, those who are insurers and insured and those who are only insured. Right. And those who are outside the law and right. uninsured. Second line insured is off. What's the keyboard? I Possible can't even key. tell you who's typing this. What? I said, who's typing this? I, I wonder if it's the angle of the keyboard or there's something wrong with the keyboard. Could be. I like that. Um, between those who are uh, between A. That's it. B. C. Yes, I like that. It seems like there's a before, during, and after in there somehow. You are a smart man. Thank you. That's. Yeah, reciprocity in there. Yeah. Yes. How have I done this here? Did this okay? Yeah, that's. Hmm. What are we talking about here? We're talking about. Um,
I felt like I did answer this. I wanted to answer this. We, we, uh, we covered it in speech, but I didn't answer the, the problem of how, okay, it's that, um, however, the general consensus intuition will be to remove from political participation. Ah, oh, this is good. This is good rather, clarification. Rather than expand the law to suppress the female method of irresponsibility. Invasion and You know, I mean, it's a simple way of saying the, uh, the, the overwhelming evidence is that if you don't have at least three kids, you shouldn't have any say in government. Yeah, there's a, I want you to separate in the above production. Thank you. Yeah, so the, um, that, the interesting function of it is it's those, um, that you're gonna anger a class the cat lady class is going to be mad. That's good. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> it's like disenfranchisement of the cat ladies is, 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 a, is a desired outcome. <laughs> That's not a problem. <laughs> Just saying. You're being insured by others. <laughs> it's okay. You and your cats. You and your cats. Okay. Uh, you're a free rider. Deal with it. Oh, my. Right. Oh my. The truth is. Okay. So it's not our job. It's not our job to license irresponsibility. In fact, it's a counter to the, all of our interests. Right. At all scales for all time and increasingly so with time. It's only our job to provide a vehicle for those who are able, willing and demonstrated, have demonstrated they're willing to take on responsibility. So if a woman is, well, you know, if, if a man is willing to, you know, not get into trouble, which is really hard for some of us, <laughs> Right, <laughs> you know, uh, to uh, be responsible to uh, build a family or to at least pay for himself and participate in the military. 
you know, you've paid your dues. If a woman has said, uh, you know, I'm going to crank out a couple of kids here, then uh, you've paid your dues. But there's say, there's no difference between those responsibilities and the taxes necessary that we produce. We have to do these things. So um, how does a man ensure the polity by force? How does a woman ensure the polity by reproduction? That's the women force that is a legitimate force. Right. So how does... And a necessary, right? That's, oh, that's. That, that's biological reality. And it is unavoidably so. And um, that's nature's law. Nobody has to like it, right? So uh, I think that's, that's that paragraph right there is just a wicked punch, and it's it's just right at below the belt level, man. It's just right wicked, and it's un, it is unavoidable, and nobody has to like it. It's a fact. Of, I don't fucking like it. I want to be equal with the women. I just want them to be not crazy in politics. <laughs> <laughs> you're setting the bar way too high buddy well i mean but you know There's, i love women i mean i'm going to be on this till the I day know. i fucking die i, I absolutely love women I and know. every and if i could have a dozen of them i would i know right <laughs> i know <laughs> I, I, I can sort of keep two or three going if they don't know about each other <laughs> and I'm sort of naughty and i had one in four or five different countries I could sort of keep that going because you don't have to remember all their names at the same time. And you can, right? And when I was doing that kind of thing, I was okay. Now, I, I, com I completely get it. Everybody says to me, you know, like, you know, like I get this shit all the time. Like, you're, you're, you're not capable of getting those. I'm saying, dude, I am. You just, I mean, you just have a really weird concept of women in your head or something. I don't know, but women are the same. They're really easy. I get a friend who's a friend. I don't, I, can, I don't consider him a friend. He's a, bottom, he's a bottom feeder. That guy will go through, he will get, always get women, right? But he's a bottom feeder, right? You know, if, you, if you're a guy and you think that your status is far higher than it is and you're going to get equality, I get fellow nerd chicks, right? There's fucking millions of them and nobody pays attention to them. And they're plenty good looking and whatever. If you're right, you know, I get, I, their nerd chicks are awesome. Art chicks are awesome. You want to go after the, a different kind of chick? Fine. You know, but right. I did fine. Jesus. If you have money, you have money and charisma, right? I mean, you, you take care of your self, right? Have a little money and have a little charisma and fucking listen, right? I mean, just listen and empathize with them. Women are fucking simple, right? Right, and fungible. Yeah, well, they're fun. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is that men are a lot more different and women are mostly the same and they hate that shit, but it's just the true. <laughs> oh my, it's okay. I get in trouble for this. I, get in, I might get in trouble for just letting you say all that and not <laughs> objecting strongly. Right. I just no. said I love women. I know, I know. So, but the, the, the primary problem is, of course, is that we've said this um, before, is that the primary problem, uh, error of the 20th century was the inclusion of women into economy and polity without equal suppression of the female method of antisocial behavior yep behavior had accumulated 
over millennia. In, in uh, suppression of male. Yes. In other words, our law was in other words, our law was insufficient for the expansion of the franchise, right? Of the franchise. Franchise since the destruction civilization has been achieved in the modern world, ancient world, by the means of female warfare. I mean, it's not, what we're saying is really, I mean, in the reductive, it's the first principles, it's really simple, right? The primary error of the 20th century was the inclusion of women, including in, how did I get that one? Uh, uh, inclusion of women into the economy and polity without equal suppression of the female method of antisocial, anti-political, anti-civilizational behavior that we'd accumulated over millennia in the suppression of male antisocial, political, and civilizational behavior. In other words, our law was insufficient for the introduction um, uh, of the expansion of the franchise into to women since the destruction of our civilization has been achieved in the modern world as in the ancient world by the means of female antisocial behavior and anti-political warfare by destruction of the institutions of cultural production a competition that we call responsibility for market computation of innovation, adaptation, application, evolution, and the cost at the cost of the emotional stress to use adaptation. You know, I mean, it's just not, it's a really simple first principle that's got us here. And it's a, as such. Hmm. The solution, right. Right, that's what we did. So it's not like we're not like saying you're evil, whatever. I mean, it's a natural thing in the triangle for the females, like the triangles to be over here, the females to be driving toward what's best for uh, you know right. the easiest for them to bear children. They don't know why they think the way they do. They just think like women because they're evolved to. Right, we get the males from the trade side to the force side, and we're all in this triangle somewhere, right, with our different biases trying to you know find other people to cooperate with to bring about what we think our needs and wants are right you know and so the whole trick in this triangle is not necessarily to say do this which is what theologies and philosophies do it's to say you may not do these things therefore limiting you to the maximum field of available choices of innovation uh, innovation adaptation uh, um, application and evolution in other words the greatest sense of prosperity for all but you know there's a problem with the female minds and scale is that they think in pictures and they think in experiences and they're very and 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 uh, it's very hard for them to think in, if they can do it at all because it doesn't appear to be they can do it at all in systems and so no i mean it's it, we can't find a single woman who can do it we can't find one I mean, if you'd think after, you know, what is it, 70 years we've been trying to find the, the one woman to hold up and say she's the equivalent of an Einstein or a Maxwell or, a, you know, or a, a Hilbert. There aren't any. There aren't even close. And so, uh, and this is, of course, the pre Summers, Larry Summers at, at Harvard got terminated for making this rather empirically obvious statement. Um, 
but there's nobody even close. Well, I mean, it's not that that, that, that means you're inferior or bad. It just means we have a division of labor, right? You know, right. it's like, right. why did why why did Babbage discover computation, but as rife as the one who actually wrote it down? <laughs> I got nothing to say to that. That's funny right there. You know, it's just fucking realities. Just deal with the reality. And so you you know, I don't know. I, mean, I just get very frustrated by it because there's Wait, what? What? What do you get frustrated by? The inability for people to accept the differences in the sexes are large at the extremes. Uh, Most of us are. Right, sorry, this is a, this is a very good topic because it is the, it is. I I don't regard it as inability. I regard it as unwillingness to to accept the reality of the situation, and it is because it's it's willful ignorance. Is it? I do believe it is because it's it's inconvenient for me to even begin to process that information and i'd rather not thank you very much right that's how it appears to me because it's like i don't want to take the effort to even think about the world existing as you are proposing sir it's much easier for me just to say you're an asshole i can imagine how a woman thinks for about a half a second and it makes me want to have a nervous breakdown I can't imagine how hard it is to be a woman, right? I can also understand how women think about science and economics. It's, it's a very low, le- even if they're really sophisticated, the level of understanding is, is experiential. Sur- and surficial. Well, it's just, yeah, okay. They can't imagine what it's like to simply, and um, like some people have no inner voice and some people have no inner vision. How do you tell a person with no inner voice and no inner vision what it's like to have an inner voice? In other words, talking to yourself and inner vision, visualizing things. How do you explain that to a person? They can't, you can't, right? Um, how do you expe- you know, explain colorblindness to a colorblind person? Well, thankfully now we have glasses and stuff that right. allow uh, colorblind people to see uh, other colors, right? So, so they can all of a sudden come into this realization. Or when you watch a deaf person cry when they can actually hear. Right, they, right, them, right, right. Those are These some are of the most moving videos, those. Right. I mean, that's, it's, it's so, it makes you want to cry for oh, yeah. joy for that person, right? That's right. Why do we think a woman understands a man's ability to systematize? See, they only think it of, well, those guys understand the VCR or tools or fixing stuff, right? But they can't even comprehend what's going on in our heads. The idea is unavailable to them. It's possible for me to think about a woman, think how a woman thinks, because I've studied this problem long right. enough that I get it, right? But, you know, I can do it for, and I, and I have to give up emotionally, right? In other words, I can't bear the idea of it. I don't know how to describe it, but the chaos in a woman's mind, how they have to live in that world, to me would be soul crushing. Right. So it's like the, the, the issue is this, is, is they believe the, the lie that all of us are equal and that you must be, you're defective in the fact that you, you act like you act because you're not equally crushed yes <laughs> you defective woman right that's how i do it because it and and i'd rather have my blinkers on and keep doing the random stuff i do than try to think about it your way right that's, and it's 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 willful ignorance okay i want to let, let's continue i want to continue my counter right okay. i can do to my counter now try to get that woman to imagine what it's like to hold and rotate up. Look, we know the example of men and spatial direction and women and landmarks. Same issue, right? It's pictures okay. and steps and experiences. It's not a model, It's right? And so men have models. We model everything. We model space, we model time, we model populations. And what we tend to see is very different. Women tend to look at pictures and experiences 
right? And or empirical facts, yeah. right? Which they're really good with by because they can handle lots of little things, right? Right? Because you don't have to model lots of little things. For a man, we can't remember all those little things because we're modeling all this stuff in time and space. So that if you look at men, we do spatial rotation and men develop all the theoretical advances because at the end, there's just no women can do that. You do meet women who can drive spatially, right? Okay. But you don't find any, you do meet women who can think politically, but at some point they break down in their ability to construct models. There aren't any women where there are some men. And so, and just likewise, there's, there's the only people on the other way that think like women are Ashkenazim, right? And so you, you don't get white people that talk like Ashkenazis. Now the Ashkenazis think they're deep, but what they are is just thinking like women. Well, for the same reason, why does none of the Jewish political stuff ever work out? Why do they always fail? For the same reason, anything female has, any female organization fails at scale because they can't model anything. So you, you think of these things, you think, well, I'm just making these generalizations. Well, of course I'm making these generalizations. The point is that all the generalizations point to one underlying difference between empathizing, pictures empathizing and now and systems um, and uh, systematizing with uh, over time then, right? I mean, it's just, <laughs> that's how we evolved. And there's a reason our brains and female and male brains are wired differently is because there's the same amount of computing power applied because we can only produce so much to different dimensions, the now dimension and the then dimension. So men are faster, stronger and systematized over time and women are, no, are more durable but weaker in, in and more uh, experiential in time. And it's just, you do that by just vaguely varying the difference in how the brain, brain is uh, organized during development. It's not, it's just, the brain is just cabling math. It's just a lot of cables. All right, so we're, we're talking, so I, I, I broke this down. I was like, it's like there's hardware, there's firmware, which is intuitions, and then there's software, which is, programming after that. That's how I Well, the it. thing is, you, I want to get to the answer you brought up, which is because I don't actually know the answer. My belief is they can't understand. Right? Um, because it's like, oh. you know, it's like, oh, so it, it's like, or is it willful <laughs> ignorance or can't they understand? It's, okay, so or is it both? Wait, what, what's interesting is like this, it's like, it's like, uh, I would argue that it, it, it is if they can't understand, they are incapable of incapable of being willfully ignorant. They're simply ignorant, which is to say, that, and but and they can't imagine what they're they're not they're ignorant of. Okay, which is. When you ask them to understand, that is rude. Well, it makes them feel vulnerable. And for men, we're like, well, I'm vulnerable. That just means my position in the pack is right here, but it doesn't matter. But to them, any, every invulnerability is a thing to get excited over. Because they don't, that's not how they, they just think of every invulnerability as just being very loud. Every vulnerability is being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they, that's why you hear them say, I want to feel, you know, I, I, I'm, I want to feel, they actually like feeling vulnerable so they can test all those feelings. It's like tasting chocolates, you know I mean? Right. But if you find a woman and she says, I want to feel vulnerable, what she means is I want to feel safe. I want to have to not, I want to feel vulnerable, but not be threatened. Not responsible. Well, they're okay with being, they love being, I mean, I always use my girlfriend, Amanda, as the great example of the perfect female, right? I mean, I mean, she's a per great mom, you know, takes care of a great house, loves her kids, rides her horses, is beautiful to her friends, never says any, never says a harmful word, right? I mean, she's a freaking angel, right? right. Um, she's soft and she smells good and she's pretty to look at and she brings joy and happiness to the world around her. Right? That's nice. 
no fucking you know if you had you could crank her out like the millions every guy would sign up you mean it's right just, you were doing a, the world a service yeah i mean you know the, the completely uh, what she wants is the, she says i want to be able to just feel you know, you, you, said, you got to translate that woman feeling into psychology and it's fucking awesome. And so the way I said, the way I worked my relationship with her is that she was kind of broken, like a soft, soft women like that get broken easily by guys because they're too vulnerable. They are vulnerable. And all I just says is I'm going to make you feel safe. Right. Period. It took me, it takes me, whenever you meet a woman, you want to make feel safe. My view takes 18 to 24 months, right? You, you know, and you just make them feel safe. And you know that if they feel unsafe to tell you about it and you will find a way to make them feel safe about it. <laughs> Very reasonable to me. It's, it's so easy, right? Now, the problem is, is that all that changes with women is that discourse becomes more layered in self-defensive lies and justifications and excuses. And, um, and um, you know, and, and they don't want to, and, and it, it's like, well, your, your thing is, okay, I'm getting harder and harder to figure out what makes you feel safe. <laughs> Feeling safe just might be, I need to maximize my time with my girlfriends, my, you know, I need to have enough work in the workplace that I don't, you know, who knows? Whatever makes them feel safe is good. You just, but it's to make a woman happy is generally removing, is removing unsafeties rather than, any, than doing anything positive. Right, They'll right, gravitate right. to whatever safety they want. Anyway, I don't know how we got on this. I was just trying to make my point that, you know, th is the whole point here today is what what's the causal axis here of the law of insurers, right? And what does it mean to be an insurer? What went wrong? And uh oh, this is the probably net result. And then how do, then we've got the answer for it, right? So the problem is then we have to just enumerate the ways at which make this possible. That's now we what think, the content of the law is to be filled with. Right, is that we have to start, and we have to start with, okay, what are the, what are the first laws? Now we tend to think about this as the Bill of Rights. Right. Right. But the Bill of Rights was an add-on afterwards because they were assuming right. that the common law would persist and that this was unnecessary. Right. And so it it took the, the Bill of Rights wasn't, wasn't necessary for many of the founders' positions because of the common law. But some of them said, yeah, I'm not so sure this common law thing is going to hold up to a work, a federal government that won't abuse it, right? So, so let's put some things in here to make sure of the big things that they don't get right, wrong. Right. right. So what we have to do instead, because they didn't start with first principles, they just assumed the common law and they were building a new federal government on top of the common law. They didn't go back and they had pretty much had uh, Blackstone start with it. They didn't go back to first principles and say, okay, well, what are the first, what are the first principles, which is this right here, right? right? What are the first principles? And then how do we construct the preservation of first principles from the initial rights, obligations, and alienations. Right. Did I do? Am I've gone over my? Oh, no, that's right. Over? No, that was that's right. right. And so, <clears throat> I'm just trying to test your time tolerance here. I mean, no, I'm not in a time crunch. I'm just processing the information. So, uh, we've answered the first problem. You know, this is a better law class than you're going to get in any. In any <laughs> Good, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, and so uh, now we know what that first principle is, right? Right. We know what the frame of it is. We've recited what the first principle is. We've identified the problem. Um, we're going to um, we're going to uh, have to go through and say. 
it's so rare that we have kids here. Um, is to say, um, what do we have to construct and how do we construct it out of the three tools? Right. right. Oh, so those are the, those are the uh, building blocks. Correct. And, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So we have to construct from first principles, the rights, obligations, and alienabilities, institutions that make Mm. All right. Yeah. So, um, I need another cup of coffee <laughs> to start going through this. Right. <laughs> everybody's gonna love how i start it everybody's gonna love the beginning and i was like we're gonna get i'm gonna get one topic out and that's the whole point's gonna be made with one topic <laughs> and everybody's gonna love it and the enemy's gonna hate it <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have a diversion i'm gonna we're gonna get ready to make some coffee we can do the diversion off the topic off the off the break but it's a kind of entertaining because it goes to uh Etymology for games. Okay, so now that we've had our second coffee break. All right, we're ready to go again. <laughs> uh, I don't know what figure if I'm going to, I'm probably going to break these up into separate part one, part two, and three for today. That works. Um, uh, so we have to get down to right to so say, okay, so I just want to cover what we did already. We um, started out with, okay, you know, so here's the format. We've talked about what makes a law, law legitimate. How do we construct, what are the properties of a legitimate law? What's the means by which we construct a law such that covers those properties? And then within the law, what's the content of the law? What, what do we got to cover into it? In order to do that, we have to remind ourselves, is what is it that constitutes this law? Because we've been talking about the natural law all along, but let's talk about you know, uh, what that means when we actually implement it. We talked about it being a question of insurers, insurers, and uh, those who are insured <laughs> as being a different, as being a, 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 a different classes, so there's three of them. We talked about the whatever happened to the, what happened in the 20th century that made our law you know, vulnerable. And um, then we get down to, well, okay, so our law is the, is the reciprocal insurance of one another's, et cetera that this law is non-universal. In other words, um, the law may be universal in its description, but the application of that law might differ in context. So, and this means that um, you may, you, the, the, while the universal law, the natural law is, uni, is a universal in the sense that everybody can make use of it. And if everybody, could make use of it, they would be in better condition. Not everyone is a con in a con present condition that can equally make use of it. So it may require steps in order to get there. And so furthermore, groups may mature at different weight rates and have different abilities to take responsibilities, uh, take on responsibilities on the world stage. So they may have they may need different organization. They may need the same fundamental laws, but they may need different um, applications of the law, different institutions, and different systems of cooperation in order to make this happen. So, what we're of course doing is working from the bottom up, from first principles, trying to make sure that we're disambiguating you know, those different uh, you, those different requirements across it, so that 
yes, this is the one most optimum law. Europeans are most able to do this law. It doesn't appear that too many other people are either willing or able to do this kind of law. And that this might be to do with the fact that we've just been at it for a long time. It might be that we're, our culture is more disposable to it. Or it might be that we've genetically evolved like others to, to, um, to mirror our group's evolutionary strategy. So <clears throat> we, what do, is it that we have to con construct here? We have to construct from first principles, the rights, obligations, and alien abilities. And once we have that, the institutions that make possible and unavoidable and inalienable the production of insurers of self-determination by self-determined means and all that follows after that. So what is necessary for us to insure one another? And what is it that we are insuring? Right? <clears throat> What's necessary? Okay. So let's talk this will be in the context of a state function, right? Well, let's do it individuals first. Okay. And then we'll go to institutions. I see. Sure. Um, Sovereignty and reciprocity. Right. So we have three three um, terms we have to operationalize. As right. how do we ensure one another? This is this is this is. Uh, I just want to see if you're going to throw it out there. What's that? What's necessary for us to ensure one another's self determination? Force of arms, man. There we go. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> it's just uh, that's the world we live in. Yeah. Abuse. Yeah. I want yep. to make sure that we does that make sense to you? Alienation is defection, yeah. Yeah. Or or flight. It's not necessarily, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You were testing me, huh? No, I just wanted to show the audience how fucking obvious it is. The first law, <laughs> wait, the, the, the first wait. law is tough. Even Dr. Brad gets this. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a reason. It, it, I, I don't know why it's the Second Amendment. <laughs> it's there. It shouldn't be. It's the. It's a, no, that's just an error. It was a. It was an ordinal error. It's not an opinion. It's a fact. <laughs> Necessary prerequisite. It's just, all right, that's it, right? So the, 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 the first one is, um, I'm probably going to get one of those stupid errors here. No. Nope. Okay. Uh -oh. All right. Um, I can never tell when it's going to auto invent. And right. It's not. Right. Um, 
right? That's okay. So, so, so you have to, I have to insure you, right? You have to insure me. We have to insure others. They have to insure us. So I have a right. Oh, God damn it. Obligations. Not really, once you understand this one, everything else is, I mean, honestly, everything's built upon this one. Yeah. Everything falls from that. Everything. Well, because it's, it's like the base, I, I, I liken it like this is like the, the family is the result of cooperation between males and females. I want to capture this. Go ahead. Society is the result of cooperation between men and families. Okay. That's it. Right. Well, you, you, there's one more. You got to have three points to make a line. Is that how we do it? There you go. It's the institutionalization of, of the, so it's a wider scale cooperation, institutionalization of men, co cooperation between men. Yeah. Three points on you, you gotta if you can't do all three points, you, you gotta wonder what you're missing. Well, we, we call it okay, the polity or the state, right? Yeah, I, I the uh, that's it. So it, when you when we talk about um, the cooperation that we're talking about, is this is society? This is the re, no, the the society. Okay, we have to go back to where we were. That was a good capture. Where were we? Just above there. Hierarchy of operation. So I want to, this is why the feminists are pissed. Because it says their power is in reproduction. They want to, they want to skirt the job. They're denying their responsibility to the future. It's fucking annoying. And I'm like, I don't care. I, you know, it's a lot of guys don't want to fight more either. Right. You know, we just do. Right, so let's go back. So they, they, they keep saying there's a way around this natural law. Well, I mean, give us artificial uteruses, right? And let us, and give us the eggs of supermodels. Right, and it's all- Wait, 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 because we, we deserve that. <laughs> for putting up with women, we deserve it. Sorry, I just had to say that to see if I could get some laughter out of this. So wait, go back up there where we were. So the- um. So insurance, number one, is required is necessary for economics or so social so insurance at a, at a social level, right? Which is the men are cooperating by agreeing to use their arms to protect their economic interests. That's a society. Okay, so you want me to define society? Well, I'm just find these terms. No, I think that it's we're fairly well done there because there's a there's a increasing uh, there's a there's a it's a you're saying that this this actually belongs to what 
saying this actually belongs up here. It does. There you go. There you go. It's really not cooperation. Yes. <clears throat> it's a guarantee of the interest in cooperation. You know, you accrue interest for, for participation. Mm -hmm. Can I just interject something? I like to shit on, you know, Bernard Ocostrup and um, who's that other, that British guy? It's a fucking lunatic that keeps saying birds have some spiritual thing in them. I can't think of his name. I forget it all the time. Right. Wait, wait, I'm thinking of Geldrake. No, no, that's another one. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you're going to ruin my, if you keep piling them on, the tasks will seem insurmountable. I'm sorry, I can't drink my coffee when I'm chuckling like this. And I keep getting these likes on me shitting on Bernardo Castro, right, <laughs> for people. And then his defenders are all like, they're morons and it's hysterical, right? <sighs> Rupert Sheldrake, Sheldrake. So it's like Sheldrake is the, is, is basically a lunatic, right? Castro is a, is a moron. <laughs> and I like put most philosophers somewhere underneath Castro, right? And then you get to the people who are vaguely not stupid, right? <laughs> but most philosophers right now, they're fucking embarrassing. I mean, at least if you get to somebody like was Zizek, right? Slavoj Zizek, he, he's fucking entertaining. He's, but he's not, doesn't, he, he claims to be a, he's really not. He's just a guy who bitches for a living, right? And everybody likes to listen to the fact that his bitching is basically a comedy routine, right? But he's not really a philosopher. Like, um, what's his name? It's okay. I don't remember the name. But even if you get into the people who, who aren't morons, like the guys, you know, in the, uh, in the cognitive science uh, discipline, you know, they're they're still in this woo woo land and it's just of you know consciousness i'm like dude the fucking science is here it's over okay get out of it your career is over write the final book saying that we've transitioned let's just close the book no way <laughs> it is it i am fascinated by that conversation which is i find it to be just a silly distraction what are you talking about this for consciousness it's like i'm not interested in it i'm not interested no. it doesn't interest me in the least place it's like it seems it's, like it's, just a diversion. Well, yeah, but I mean, people like those, what we call philosophical conundrums because it gives them something to think about. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an unsolvable problem from their perspective and lets them try to understand themselves and man. So I sort of get it. It's like pondering the existence of God or, you know, the physicists pondering the uh, the origin and consequence of the universe, or or uh, philosophers pon pondering uh, 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 consciousness and qualia, you know, it's all just jerking off. How right? many uh, angels can dance on the head? Of yeah, the it's the hand, same right? fucking like, thing, you know. I, mean, I, I just, I, but I, you know, I I understand the I understand the drive. Yeah, I understand why we let people collect money for it, get salaries for it get research grants for it. I mean, come on, what you're talking about, what you're talking hey, about. Wait, wait, would you let your kid go study it for a living? You know, it's like, I mean, oh, spend a year doing this. Guys, what are you doing? You know, there's, there's, there's guys I even like, like, you know, I mean, there, there's guys I like and they're not, they're not 100% wrong, but they just won't write the book. You know, they're like leaving it up to guys like, I don't want to write that book. You're the guy in philosophy. Say philosophy's over. Write the book. On the end of <laughs> you know, do you get, just get together. You know. Um, Wait. So, so, so the it's it, it's Nietzschean. It's not God is dead. Philosophy is dead. Philosophy's dead. 
Now it's over now in the sense that they mean it as that there's right there's no room for philosophy left there's right what there is room is for philosophy is choice in other words they're not trying to there is no science left to philosophy there is only choice well preference, science, right preference. preference yeah there's a room an infinite room for discussing preference right. there's no end there's never going to be an end that's right. to discussing for preference. So that's the job of philosophers. But these guys that try to say goods or or truth or whatever, and I'm like, you're a bunch of pseudoscientific ass clowns. We've known the answer now, right? I mean, it's out there. Write the book. Philosophy's over. And I'm specifically thinking about a few, few that are rather ponderous. Uh, one in particular philosopher that's currently working in California, which everybody knows by the size of his beard. Um, uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna so this just write the book, it's fucking over. Okay, we can close philosophy departments and go home. And then once we've closed philosophy departments, we can we can uh do re, we can create more law departments and convert law to a science, and then we're we're sort of fucking done with this problem, right? But this 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 woo woo generation is I mean, it's just. It's just religion for midwits that go to get out of that they graduate from uh, classical what do they call it? liberal liberal arts degrees right oh. it, it's it's liberal it's 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 a pseudo scientific religion for midwits it's freaking exasperating I mean I would eat any of these philosophers for lunch and they'd never agree to argue with me because the minute they talked to me they would know what would be true I can't even get Hoppe who I basically want to say congratulate to be to debate me. Do you feel better now, Kurt? I let you go on a rant because I think the audience will appreciate letting you tear, hearing you tear about. It's like watching a bull run around in this pen, getting mad at the world. It's like, <laughs> there's, where's all the damn cows? What the hell? I mean, we could just get like a little hand in the back of my head that looks like you and just doing the puppet thing. I'm going to put on a Kurt show for you using my Kurt puppet. It's, just, it's all right, man. We have a good old time. <laughs> oh lord like, i gotta i gotta he won't be he would never want to be public but my friend todd from seattle would be really fun to have him come on here because he's a he is from for we were friends for a very long time and he just a master of just putting a coin in and making fun of me for oh. it and he's like as bad as you are worse oh my Way worse. Oh my, what incorrigible, eh? <laughs> He's like, he would just do it. And you know, I wouldn't recognize it. He just just start laughing. Right. And I it was it wasn't until he'd been laughing for like five seconds that I realized what was that the go the game was on me. He knew the answer. He was just trying to bait me into going on a rant. I'm not trying to bait you into it. I, I enjoy it. Yeah, you are. You. No, and you I'm enjoy it. I do enjoy it. I think the audience <laughs> enjoys it too. Cause it's like, we don't quite know where it's going to go. It's like tearing around, watching, watching some crazy animal running around. It's like, and it has, and he's done. It's beautiful. That's what it's, what's it. So well, we're back to talking about serious stuff here. Okay. I'm sorry. We've got reasonably fresh coffee. Right. Right. We're talking about something that's really important that will make all the guys on the right have erections. That's right. Directions is that how do you ensure it the returns starts, of cooperation? Starts with force. <laughs> that's awesome. It's like that's who's going to start it, right? <laughs> that's right. You know, it's like an inverted triangle. You know, you try to seduce, you try to trade, and if it doesn't work, you got to fight it out. I mean, it's really you know, I mean, it's just not complicated. Seduce, oh, right, right. trade. That, that's it. That's the fa the family is generated by that seduction. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> well, it's true. Seduce for family, trade for society and economy, and fight for state. I mean, it's the same. There you go. That's see that goes that's your trifecta above there. Well, you so this, there's only three on, ways of based coercive. on coercive force. There's only three ways of organizing people. Of course, it's always going to come down to the triangle because there's only three tools. It's it's not like we have yeah. It's not like we have this big industrial wrench size set for every. You know, it's just there's one thing. It's like it's either that one or that one or that one or maybe two or three together in some combination. Right. That's all there is. Just different size ones. Right. <laughs> like, That's it. <laughs> it's like a socket wrench with yeah. Size. It's just triangular in shape. 
the irony is the simplicity of it compared to the complexity of nonsense we've invented over time to avoid the simplicity of it. That, that's what's ironic. That's right. And the, the beauty of it is it's three is easy to remember. You can remember this, guys. This is doable because it's not it's simple enough that even I can keep up. It's all right. Killing me. All right. So now that we've now that we've uh, completely. <laughs> I fucking lost my train of thought. I'm going <laughs> okay, we're going. We're, what what needs to happen? Well, how do we construct insur the insurance? Right? You have a right. Right. It's a contract, right? Correct. It's an insurance contract. That's perfect. It's a social oh, contract, right? Social contract. Oh, you're gonna you just made the feminist mad again in my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm have to oh, it's so it. simple. Right, now I'm gonna have to, this is the means, this is the test. No, this is the how, how, I don't know how to, I, I, there's something here I can, I can't quite put my eyes around, arms around it. Um, I've almost got it, right? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so you have individual force of arms, yeah. right? Um, and uh, this, that means that you have a right to reciprocal, sure sometimes means. Right. A right to arms, the uh, those arms necessary right to provide insurance to yourself and others yeah oh my um oh, right to apply those arms to the, those arms to provide insurance, restitution, and punishment. 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 Yeah. See, the thing is, our ancestors didn't know how to do this. It's very complex. And I think that they, did they it, it, a it was is an intuition to that. Right. Right. It was just intuition. Right. They, they just took it for to granted. Write it that's what they did. We don't need to write it down. It's obvious. Right. Because that's what they did. Right. They just did it. Right. So, um. I think I got this. It's three steps, right? A right to do, a right to it, a right to the tools to do it, and a right to the action. That's correct. Which is kind of interesting because the, the right to the action is the obligation. You have an obligation to the action. Correct, but we disambiguate it here. Yep. 
So we say now, and this is important, <clears throat> there's a tendency in the law to not repeat things because they're logically, determ they logically deterministic. The problem is they're not. Right, and that some clever word hacker is gonna oh, oh, twist it up. Once, but once you create three points, create a line, right? Yes. Right? How hard is it to violate the line? It's fucking impossible. Yeah. You ever, I, I always wonder, do you, do, do you do idiots out there think that I haven't thought this through? This is fucking <laughs> geometry. Wait, wait, which one of you? Which one of you? Was no, I just, I mean, it's like people, I mean, I'm like, dude, you, the, I, the depth at which I, I mean, my business partner used to say that to me. It's like, I don't think about it that way. If Kurt thought it through, it's been thought through. There's something, you know, there's something. thoroughly, thoroughly, <laughs> thoroughly <laughs> exhaustively. <laughs> He, don't I mean, make him exhaust you by yeah you don't want to know the level i've thought this through because it will be as crushing to you as it was to me to do <laughs> fuck and i'm like dude i thought it through it's just math to me now right all right um okay we're on so the line we, again we're on the next part of the line Yep. Yes. Oh, this is very good. This is very interesting. Math, dude. Well, People no, it, it was an interesting function because it's like you're 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 insuring the insured as well as the other insurers. So I'm like waiting for that. I think I think you have an obligation to the insured that we have agreed are the insured. I, I wanted to. I wanted to do this cycle first. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. No, no. You, you, you're absolutely right because it's a chance I would have forgotten because I got wrapped up in. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I, um, uh, I want to be able to. I want to be able to address them separately. Right. Because this is this is a derivation of that. It's not an equal to that. Right. Um, what you want to say is. Right, that's what you want us to say here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Gotta make sure I don't screw this up there.
it's, that's a singular rules and other self-determination or self-determining rules. Obligation to reciprocally ensure the self-determined by self <clears throat> should basically mirror this one. Right. Oh, I forgot it. Oh, I like this. To have and use those arms. Okay. I like it. The um, good Americans will like it because it's not like you um, have a right to bear arms. You have an odd a duty. <laughs> yeah. Once we get down here, I'm going to answer this. And what do you see? What happens down here? Right. In other words, it's a crime not to. Yes. It's a crime to even vote for or mention depriving yourself of that responsibility. The mere suggestion of it in a public space is a criminal act. Yes. I like that. Okay, this I got to get this last one right. I'm not sure the third one is necessary. No, oh, I forgot to. Yep. <laughs> Here, close. I, I, I had. I, I, there must be some pornographic <laughs> something in the back of my head. Mike Bear <laughs> instead of Bear. Right. Okay, I won't say anything about the. I was uh, just trying to. I was just trying to see if I could get you to interject something the, funny. The, the bikini-clad women with machine guns. I want you to fix that of opportunities there on both of those now. Yep. Okay, sorry. I think I already did this one right. Reply, so it's Obligation of obligation to own, obligation to apply. Yep. So you see the pattern? Yes. The pattern is to state your right, the means and the obligation, right? 
right? So you have a right that for, from others, an obligation to others. Right, correct. Unavoidable, right? So a legal responsibility, so responsibility. Which we call it responsibility. Duty. Yeah. All right. That's it. Good to differentiate the three. Yes. And so, you know, I mean, it's it's so it's so simple. It's like many things. I just want to just I just love this one fact, right? If once you have this, it's every that's how you do everything. You know, so it's like, I'm going to talk about, we talk about all this crap that we've got to produce a legitimate law. But once you understand all these factors, it doesn't come down to anything more complicated than that. <laughs> I mean, it's just- Law can be fairly straightforward. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. You know, from there you get into, um, you get into, we'll get into it, but now you just got to get into, uh, sovereignty or reciprocity when you get into reciprocity you get into truth once you've got there you've got everything see but it's the end is nigh yeah in sight. <laughs> i can see it right there right so um so uh, i should i should i should move this up there that's right You need a Y there. Thank you. All right, so an obligation. I'll figure that out later. I don't want to do that right now. I want to stay on this. A right, an obligation, and an inalienation. Right. And an alienation means you have. I'm going to have to think of this. Evasion, yep, yep. Others. Insurer.
let's use the same duty, obligation, more responsibility. Yeah. No, I don't think I'm trying to do that, am I? What's that? Yes, I am. I don't know what this is. No, I already said it. No, I, no, I got to do that right. Okay. <clears throat> That's not spelled correctly, insurers there. Third line down under obligations. Keep going, yep. Thank you. What am I missing here? Okay. Okay, so 
right? Definitions fucking matter. Oh, so people, one of the things I want to bring up here again, because we're spending so much time on the details, um, yeah. is that one of the criticisms we get is, or I get, is that, you know, the law hasn't worked so far. Well, the law has actually worked much better for us than every other European, precisely because our laws were better articulated. Right. There's... There's, we've identified all the holes in our law, and while it make annoying for us to write these detailed, precious, precise things and <laughs> always produce spectrums of measurement, right, is that we, we absolutely positively deny reinterpretation of these terms. And so this wordiness that people complain about is like, well, you don't have to be a lawyer. You just have to understand that, you know, it all begins with some very simple principles. And all we're doing is preventing these lot schemers, cheaters, and scumbags from abusing our law as a means to by which to understand under, undermine our civilization. That's right. And and they will. And they do, and they have, and they have, and, and it's on you have to uh, make that this is uh, fortification. I'm trying to think of how to describe this now. Ensure. Let's just save ourselves some confusion here. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> again, let's just pull everybody in if it, at the pace. Right, we what we are trying to construct the content section of the law, right? Which is this here, which consists of rights, obligations, and alienations. And while it's simplified here, if we want to bring about, whereas we have observed, and whereas we want to bring about, therefore we propose, you might repeat this right right um uh this section right you might repeat this 15 who knows as many times as you need to right right <clears throat> right does that make sense yes right so you you can repeat the class for each thing or you can just repeat this section whereas we have observed this condition whereas we desired this end state, therefore we repose, blah, 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 such that we produce, blah, blah, blah. This is just the justification Right? Right. <laughs> Warranty. Right? right. Um, um, Right. This is the um, inputs. And I'm just going to talk about, you know, boom, 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 boom. And yeah, now it might seem like it's, it's wordy to the average person. But if you go read legislation, That's some right. of it's quite good and a lot of it's shit. Yeah. Right. So by, by forcing this, you make it possible for us to largely look for these sections. Right. In a law. Right. And these are the constraints and, uh, and to be able to test them. So regarding, so what are we going to construct? The means and how, so what? How do we operation construction? Okay, okay now these are the, these are, we need to do it by insurance, sovereignty of reciprocity. But we haven't got the inalienation yet. 
Yeah, I'm just making sure that I'm not organizing this the wrong way. Okay. All right, so an alienation is, Here comes the punchline. There we go. Hmm. Crap. This is the bond. <laughs> <laughs> this is the gotcha, right? And so you, you have the rights, you have the obligations. And if they're inalienable, so, uh, so for, for any violation of the inalienability of these, of, I don't know. So this is the warranty. I haven't thought about breaking it out. Uh, I hadn't thought about breaking it out. That's an interesting question. Let's leave that. No. Yeah.
I want to solve this question. What's that? Now is Well, I, I have always included this in an alienations. I mean, I, I haven't thought about what's separating out the rights obligation and alienations and consequences. I've just considered it, this is an inalienability. It, it is a, um, it's like a guarantee, right? These, these, it's the bond. I don't know, I'm gonna have to think about this. Um, you have a positive right from others, a negative right to others, the uh, inalienability of both parties, all parties, and the, consequ and the consequence to all parties. I I'm, not, no. I I'm not sure if I should break it out or not. Let's just leave this. Yeah, it's not necessary to do that now. I don't know how to make it clearer than that. I don't like this. But I might be getting too tired to think about how to write it. <laughs> We've been going for a while, man. Um, so I just want to point out that th th this is, again, this is all there is. <laughs> it's a lot of work to get here, though. <laughs> we talk about, now we've got to define uh, we probably can move this around, right? And no, say, what, no. what is sovereignty? What is reciprocity? What is insurance? Well, let's just do it that way. Yeah. And so our next chat, if because I might be getting too tired, that's probably no, not fair. I'm 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 getting wrung out. <laughs> Um, so, and we've been at this for four, almost five hours. Really? Yeah. Wow. You know, if, if we did this every day for a few months, we would be done. <laughs> Too bad, can't make it possible. Wow. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll just, uh, we'll just, um, because we're going to do it tomorrow, right? That's right. I mean, and that's the sequence, right? We have to understand. We have to understand what are these uh, requirements. Right, and then it's uh, sovereignty, reciprocity, insurance of them. And then we've already done properties, legitimate laws, right? Yeah. We go to an inst yeah, so we just go through this. So uh, uh, reciprocity, this is display word. And the problem with this is display word indeed. Um, oh, 
Okay, well, that's really all, because you know, all we get to is, really, we're talking about demonstrated interest, right? We've already covered that. Yeah. And then we have reciprocity and the means of insurance. And then now you talk, once we get through that, we can just go through them. They, where are they? Hold on. I probably got to pull all that in, but that's it. And then we have rights and obligations. Where is okay? So, this is what we'll go over next. And we'll just bring this in. Then, all right, so that's what we'll go to there. And so, we're essentially we're building out. It's rule of law. That isn't rule, that isn't the law, rights and obligations. We're starting with rights and obligations and working up institutions. Right. So uh, we'll start and then we'll have covered most of these things. And then we'll uh, be able to take what we've got here and copy pasta it into here. And we'll have got our constitution farther along. All right, brother. I'm definitely fried. <laughs> Good man. I'm going to send you the link here. As soon as it compiles, it will take a minute. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. I'll see you in the morning. We'll have another cup of coffee. I love you. Thank you for, right all, of for all of us. Take care.